Hey, Danny here. Uh, today I'm going to be making a collage and talking about um, one of the things I value most in my art practice, and that is inclusivity. So just sit back and relax and enjoy the process. And say hi to Dahlia. <gasps> Hello. <laughs> okay, so today I picked out some pieces that were inspired by a photograph that I took of Clover sitting in front of the window. Um, I like to take pictures of moments from my day-to-day -day life, and lately I've been paying attention to the colors that I see. So when I see a combination of colors that I like, I use that as a reference for my collages. It, it helps guide my color choices when I'm narrowing down materials, because sometimes it can be overwhelming, and it's really helpful. It, it helps keep my, my color scheme um, intentional, you know. So anyway, the colors of the materials I have here are black and white, green, beige, a uh, sort of light yellow wood grain color, and burnt orange. So, uh, and, and something else that informed my choices for today were thoughts that I had about inclusivity and accessibility, because that's one of my core values as an artist. So. I brought things to the table that were very easily acquired, as in it took very little effort on my part to acquire them. And this is one aspect of collage that I really love. It's, it's a practice of making something out of anything you have access to. And eventually, if you do this enough, you'll start to collect things and then, and then you'll start to pay more attention to what comes through your life, seeing potential and objects that you may not have put much consideration into before. So, here's what I got for today. I have a piece of tool that I received from a fellow artist. Um, you know, a lot of these materials actually have been given to me from other people, either because they know that I collect things like this, or because they had some leftover material that they wanted to get rid of, and uh, I snatched it up. So uh, this is a napkin from my mother-in-law, and in this case, uh, she knows that I collect things like this. So <laughs> she um, was getting rid of some things and gave that to me. Uh, this is another napkin from her. <laughs> and this is a piece of peel-and-stick vinyl. Um, also from a fellow artist. This is fabric left over from the studio where I work. And we were just getting rid of some old things and I snagged this. I like the color. And this is a piece of Colorade, uh, which is a brand of paper that uh, is often used in art school actually. Um, for design maybe or just color planning but uh, a mentor um, said that you know they were getting rid of this and so I also grabbed that and then um, this is a paper towel with paint blotted on it and this is actually interesting because it's a residual material that was produced in the process of painting so I use paper towels to clean my brushes and the paper towels themselves, after being blotted with my dirty paintbrush, actually look beautiful to me with all these colors and the way it absorbs the paint. Um, this is a piece of cloth that came in a first aid kit that uh, because I received training in first aid for a job that I used to have. And the, these are pieces of an envelope that had a greeting card on it. The pieces are small now, but not much of the envelope is left. Um, this, These are envelopes as well, but these 
had bills or, or some kind of sensitive information inside, which is why they have these sort of funky designs on the inside. And this clear window. See, <laughs> important plan information. There you go. And this is tissue paper from a gift bag. And finally, this is a piece of denim from a pair of jeans that I cropped on the bottom. I saved the material because I really liked the color and I thought the texture was very rich. So, those are my materials. Oh, and I'm also using a piece of mat board as my base, which is actually the one piece of material that I did not just collect throughout you know my daily life I actually did purchase this it's just a very nice sturdy base for my collages so I did actually buy this <laughs> so all right I'll get started oh my gosh I forgot my scissors why do I always do that so anyway <laughs> um you know, I was thinking about the uh, material I showed you earlier, or the little piece of envelope that used to have a greeting card in it. <laughs> I find it, so it's, they're just these little pieces now, right? There's not much of the envelope left, I think is what I said. So I just, I find it so amusing that I can still tell what that is, even though it's just little pieces now and I think that that really points to something very special about collecting collage material there's most often some kind of story connected to each piece of material so I feel a personal connection to it in some way and even the smallest little piece of paper or fabric or whatever I can look at it and it could be years could go by and I could tell you exactly what project that was or where I got that from or who gave that to me um, so I just I think that's pretty special it adds another layer of meaning to my practice and another reason why I feel using found or repurposed materials creates a more inclusive practice is that it makes creating very affordable you know some art materials can be expensive like with this pretty much the glue maybe the base and I guess the scissors are probably the only thing you'll really have to buy everything else you don't necessarily have to buy you can just find them as you come across them in your daily life. Now, I guess you could argue that my piece of denim was purchased because I had to buy the pair of jeans <laughs> before I got them. <laughs> but when I bought the jeans, it was not with the intention of using it for art. So I guess <laughs> I can still get away with saying <laughs> Oh, yes, and by the way, I am joined today by my pothos plant, which I also did not buy. <laughs> this plant was gifted to me by a friend. And, um, yeah, not much of my plants. A lot of my plants, um, maybe I'll, I may purchase one of them, and then I propagate them, and I end up having several of them. And uh, that's what I'm doing with this pothos plant. So I had I received one gifted from a friend, and this one right here next to me is the uh, propagated part. So being resourceful in art and in life, right?
I guess if you really want to be thrifty, you could make your own glue. Maybe that's better for the environment to do that. I know that people do that, but um, I, I don't. I don't personally really know much about that actually. So, if you know anything about that, then I would love to hear your thoughts. You could um, let me know in the comments. So because my materials are not very expensive, I can afford to price my work at a lower price than maybe some other fine art out there. Um, and I know that pricing artwork, if you're an artist, you probably understand that that's a difficult thing to do, putting a price on your artwork. Um, you know what? Some people have got it figured out and... That is, I'm, I mean, I admire that. I really do. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, everybody kind of has their own system, their own, maybe they have a calculation that they use, or maybe it's just a feeling, or um, maybe, you know, they, they price it based on who their audience is. Uh, maybe, you know, their artwork is, is very, um, popular or high in demand and they can, you know, people are willing to pay more and, and it has more value because of that, you know, I don't know. It, there's a lot of variables that go into it, but, um, right now, so I know that my unique approach, how I arrange the pieces, that sort of knowledge and, and creativity um, and just my many years of studying to understand myself and my process and what I'm all about, that all of that adds value to my work. But when I'm pricing it, I consider my audience and my audience and what they might be able to afford. I think I think that the average person should have the ability to collect art and not have to spend thousands of dollars, you know? And that's, I definitely want to be very clear and say that some, I'm, I'm not trying to say that art is too expensive or that other art pieces are too expensive. That's not at all because like there's some amazing artwork that takes mind blowing skill and time and labor and materials and that adds so much value to the work. So it is worth a lot of money. But it's just, you know, because I personally don't have a lot of expenses in my practice. Um, I'm just, because I can, you know, I price my work in a way that works for most folks. Especially people of my generation. And uh, I, I also think that having it available to purchase directly from me very easily on my website also makes it more inclusive and accessible. I'm not represented by a gallery or anything like that. So, finally, to be quite honest, I feel that I express this value of inclusivity through my practice of sharing my process with you in these videos. I really want to demystify the art process. I 
I'm also one of those people that truly believes that everyone has the potential to be an artist. Everyone has an artist within them. So in, you know, I uh, have been a teacher in various, various um, capacities and situations and different, um, with different audiences. So in my teaching experience, I've worked with such a wide variety of people, but what really, I guess, like fires me up or, and I don't mean that in a bad way, just, you know, it kind of like, <laughs> I guess, ignites my passion <laughs> is, um, is when I meet adults who have been conditioned to believe that they can't make art. I know there are so many perspectives on what art is, who is an artist, who can make art, but this is just how I feel. I feel that anyone can make art. I'm like, I don't know if you've ever seen Ratatouille, but I'm like, I'm like Chef Gusteau. <laughs> I'm going to do my best French accent. <laughs> Anyone can cook. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, anyone can make art. Not everyone will be a great artist, but that shouldn't exclude them from the joys of making. I mean, you know, it's like, I'm not going to be a great singer, but that doesn't keep me from singing, right? Oh, my goodness gracious. Hello. Look who's here. Of course, this wouldn't be a process video without a visit from one of the cats. That was Miss Dahlia. <laughs> Who never, ever misses an opportunity to ex experience the joys of art making. <laughs> So yeah, I feel I feel like this is complete now. This piece is available on my website, which is linked below. And you know, if you enjoyed this video, then please show some support by subscribing to this channel and sharing your thoughts in the comments below. And I, I do hope that you enjoyed it and uh I look forward to seeing you again soon. All my love goes out to you. Take good care and have a great rest of your day. Dahlia, Dahlia, I'm so sorry to bother you. What do you think? Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Maybe you're coming around. You like? Okay, well, you can't win them all.